Hello everybody, welcome to the Bloodborne walkthrough. Hope you guys are strapped in and ready for this, this should be a fun ride. Last of the Soulsborne games that I need for the channel, to have them all on there. So I feel like this has been a long time coming, maybe I should have done this earlier, but anyway, let's get on with this. So I am going to be starting out with the Cruel Fate here, that's because I want to do an arcane build with this character. Now as your starting character, I don't necessarily recommend it, but this should give me... I don't want to say a disadvantage, but I won't be doing as much damage as some other people to begin with, but will give us extra um, flexibility later on as we go through the game. Now, uh, if you don't know anything about Bloodborne, the class or I think it's like history, origin, there we go, uh, that I recommend everybody begins with is the Lone Survivor. This is because it has the lowest combined blood tinge arcane stats. Now, ultimately... The reason for that is because Blood Tinge and Arcane very rarely um, interact in terms of gear or anything like that. And so you're probably going to pick one of those to boost. Um, or maybe even none of them. Uh, and so you get the most flexibility out of Lone Survivor. There will be zero wasted stats by picking this. Um, or the least, depending on which build that you go for. Um, you may end up coming back and going, well, I want to do an Arcane build. And so therefore, uh, the Cruel Fate ends up being better, which is exactly why I'm picking rule fate we have the challenge start which is the wasted skin you get a bit of extra flexibility for start a few levels lower um but again all of those points in blood tinge and arcane i just don't think are all that useful to you even for that added um flexibility so i think best starting class lone survivor easily um particularly as a lot of its stats are in vitality and endurance as well but i'm going to be going with the cruel fate so, let's get into the game. I'm going to skip through some things as we go through the walkthrough to speed things up. So, uh, I will see you guys when we are in control of the character. Okay then, so, after a harrowing cutscene then, you'll be in Yosefka's clinic. Feel free to look around um, and explore things a little bit slower than I'll be going. Uh, <laughs> on my Dark Souls walkthroughs, people have been asking me to like leave the dialogue and stuff in. I'm still going to skip through on this one. But if that's something that you'd like to see, for, for example, in... Elden Ring walkthrough, please let me know down in the comments and I will consider it. Now then, this is um, both a challenge enemy and kind of uh, a triggering of mechanics. I don't actually know which one's faster, whether dying to the wolf here right now or doing what we're going to do in a second, but we're just going to run past this guy uh, and straight up to the door that you can see ahead of us. Whilst we're opening the door, we have invincibility frames, so he can't actually hurt us, although he's probably going to get here just in time to grab me. I'm going to head through the gate as well. Don't worry about any of the items, we can come back and grab this later. But for now, because we are unarmed, um, this fight is fairly difficult. Your only real option is to attempt to get a, um, oop, a, cri a critical type attack called a visceral attack on it. If I die, it's not going to be a problem. Uh, the game continues anyway. I'm just kind of showing off here, really, that we can not have to die. He's going to get me on the way the ladder, isn't he? Nope, we uh, survived. <laughs> hey! So you don't have to die. If you die, you're going to go to exactly the same place anyway. It's just, I feel like refusing to die right now. So I'll see you guys in the Hunter's Dream once we've gone through the lantern. Okay then, so, after another cutscene, we are in the Hunter's Dream. This is our hub area. You're going to have all of these guys come up just here. These are what we call messengers. They give us gifts as we go through the game. You can pick a weapon here. Uh, in terms of weapons, I really like the Hunter's Axe. Feel free to grab that um, when you put that in its uh, extended form and hold R2. It's very, very useful um, for enemy clearance. But because I'm going with an arcane build, I'm actually going to pick up the Saw Cleaver here. That's because... Um, so there are two kind of types of damage to um, look at. There is the physical side of damage and there is the elemental side of damage for the arcane build. And the physical side of this uh, is going to be uh, old serrated. So this is going to be pretty good against beasts for us. We may add in some uh, some fire damage, but that will take away its serration. But um, either way, that's just going to be our anti-beast weapon. Um, I mean, there's a lot of enemies in this game are considered to have the beast attribute. That is just going to be handy for us. Out of these two, uh, for whatever reason, I prefer the pistol. I feel like it reacts faster. Um, we're really only using this for the parry mechanic, and so um, the stats on that really just don't bother me all that too much. And then we're going to grab ourselves the notebook, which I think is what allows us to leave notes around. I don't really use it very often. It's not really much of a thing. We could speak to Gearman. I'm not going to bother with this. Um, 
I could show you guys this. I mean, just in case your weapons happen to break, they shouldn't. Um, particularly the beginning area of the game. This is where you're going to upgrade your stuff. Um, eventually we'll add uh, runes to ourselves, which kind of act a little similarly to rings in the other Souls games through there. Over this way, um, we can spend Insight. We'll talk about more about that later. And if you want some items, you can spend Echoes here. I don't think we can get much right now, although we can buy some Molotovs if we wish to. Um, if you want to get some of this stuff cheap right now, you can do. Uh, Molotovs is probably not a bad idea. Let's go grab those. Not bad. Not much else that we can do right now. <laughs> I didn't actually realize you can buy armor this early. You could buy yourself um, some boots to make yourself a little bit more protected. I suppose it's not a terrible idea. But now that we are actually equipped, we can look at a few things here. So first up, we have the gun. Left trigger is going to pull the gun like this. And it's really not going to do much damage, but it is kind of like an interrupt. And we're going to use it to basically parry enemy attacks. Obviously, we have R1 for attacking. We have what would have been blocking other Souls games to do our weapon art, which allows us to change its form. Usually it changes the range and move set. You can also obviously combo these in together if you wish to. And that's kind of the basics of the controls and everything that we need to know right now. From this point then, we are able to go either go back to the um, sick room where we started or central Yonam. Also, we're going to go back to the sick room so that we can clear up to where we were. Okay then, so, back in Yosefka's clinic, we should be able to go back up the steps and speak to Yosefka. She should be here now. Are you? Yes. I am fine, this is going to give us Yosefka's no. blood vial. So right now, we don't have any blood vials, which means we don't have any healing. So we're going to get around this by having this on. Now usually your healing button is triangle, but we don't have any. Uh, using an item is square, so if things have to go really badly against this wolf right now, I do, in fact, have a heal. He should drop us some blood vials as well. Now, if we walk nice and quietly, have this on long, we should be able to get a charged attack off here. Oh, we missed. And the other option, of course, is to do that. So as you saw, kind of interrupted. I went a bit earlier than the last time. Once he's reared his head almost all the way back and you hit him with the pistol, that's going to set him into... A stance, um, I guess you'd call it like a staggered stance. You come up, press R1, and that'll initiate the visceral attack, which I guess re replaces the repost from from previous similar games. So now we can grab ourselves some blood vials, so we can actually heal now. I can try not to waste too many of those. Some extra bullets, which is handy. Uh, one of the one of the more um, troublesome things at the beginning of the game is the lack of um, resources that you have at your disposal to start with. This can also become a problem with bosses. Don't be afraid of uh, grinding a few of these out so you can get some extras towards the beginning of the game. Let's throw loads of, us at loads of them at us because we're going to want them. Nice and quick. Some Molotovs. Um, <clears throat> useful in a lot of situations and particularly for us. One of the uh, interesting things about the Arcane build then is it's going to increase our item discovery, so we'll actually get more items drop and also increases the damage of um, pretty much all elemental attacks. So fire, throwing a firebomb, well not a firebomb, but a uh, Molotov will do more damage because we are an Arcane build. I'm going to quickly set this as my checkpoint, so just bear with me one second. So after going back to the Hunter's Dream and Back to the stream and returning. Uh, this will now be my respawn point. Should I die? Shouldn't die. We should be okay. Oh, you must be a hunter. Um, Let's talk to this guy. Let's skip through his dialogue. Get as much of his dialogue as you want. Feel free to listen to it. This is obviously going to give you guys an idea as to what's happening around here. Um, or at least an idea as to what is wrong with a lot of these people. And we're going to come around to the right hand side. Not really much else to, uh, to say about that. Got some enemies ahead. Some pebbles. It's worth equipping those, in my opinion. I like having them so that we can aggro enemies early. I'm going to deal with this guy. So feel free to go ahead and um, practice parrying against as many of these as you want. I'm going to try choose to preserve most of my bullets right now. This technically is a quicker way through the zone. So if you were in a rush, you could roll off there, probably run past that guy down the stairs, um, and off into that direction over there where there will be a load more enemies. But... We are going to obviously go through everything. Should be two enemies around here. One with a shield. 
Uh, I find the shield to basically be a joke in this game. Um, even on the enemies, you only have to hit them a couple of times and the shield is just gone. So uh, I probably wouldn't worry about that too much. Get away that. So this guy with the, the uh, pitchfork is probably worth parrying. Because he has so much range on his attacks. cut through them. Again, this guy's blocking. Not for long. It's fine. And then we can open the gates. So, I feel like I should speak about big guy in the corner here. Um, I find it to be a fruitless endeavor to fight. Uh, if he hits you like twice, you're dead. Um, and you... Realistically, you want to keep defeat him with parry with the with the pistol. So, when we are fairly low on bullets and you haven't had much in the way of practice at the um, I keep on calling it the parry mechanic at uh, the gun mechanic, then I don't think it's all that great for you to be dealing with right now. So I'd leave it. Come back and practice on it as much as you want. Uh, if you happen to have like a ton of spare bullets because you know you, you feel like you've got loads or you've already been playing the game a little bit. Feel free. Thank you, Chop. Um, just keep an eye on these red ones. We're going to use uh, the first guy that we saw at the beginning of this area uh, for something later on, but once we get so far into the game, any one of the red lanterns will give us an item that will be useful to us. So you can use any of these um, once we reach that point. And then we want to head over to the right. So a bit of a trap here. Directly behind this carriage is a gunman. Uh, the good thing about them is, they pretty much always drop bullets. Oh, ouch, do you mind? At least I didn't really technically hurt in the end. So obviously taking advantage of the, I think it's called the rally mechanic. Weird name they give it. But basically, when we take damage, there's usually a small amount of time that we can have to um, recover some of it by attacking the, attacking the enemy. There are some enemies that are annoying and like do chip damage with like loads of attacks such as crows and dogs and um, you can't really do it against them. But even, even once they're like, um, kind of technically dead, whilst they're staggering you can still hit them more, recover some health. So we're going to continue going on around, around this right side. We are about to get mobbed by a load of enemies so just be aware of that. Whoa! Whoa, went down. Uh, let me cut back to there. Okay, so we'll fight these guys again. I feel like this is a good time to show the uh, recovery mechanic here of your souls. As you see, this guy has got uh, glowing eyes, which means he's carrying all of my blood echoes. And so when we defeat this guy, we'll get everything that we lost previously. Which isn't too much, which isn't too bad. Uh, most of the other enemies haven't actually aggroed on me yet, <laughs> so we'll have to deal with those. Um, silver bullets coming nicely though. Uh, that's actually on the other side of that gate. You can jump off here, but I just really don't advise it. Um, it does allow you to get to this gunman that's just down there. But we're going to actually go up those stairs that way first to get this guy up top. Should be a dog somewhere. I can't see it. There is also a dog down there, and the dogs are probably one of my least favourite enemies in the game. Um, because they're just annoying to fight. They have like stupid, ridiculous movement. And that uh, just makes them annoying to deal with. Where are the rest? Should be more. Okay, let's go deal with the rifleman. It's gonna let me. Seems like it's gonna let me. Where's the dog? There's the dog. So the trick to dealing with the dogs is um, if they start annoying you, you can hit them with the pistol and that will knock them over. Um, but they'll often dodge that, which is also annoying. So we're going to deal with you, and we're going to go up and get that guy. Don't worry about this door. Guy doesn't break through it. It's all good. So we're going to head up the stairs, get this gunman up on the, off the carriage. Be careful here, because he's about to shoot me. Uh, these starting ones don't seem to have um, 
melee weapon alternatives, but some of the later ones will have like a saber they can draw out, so just be aware of that. It's, not, it, it's nothing like completely egregious, it's just worth knowing that that's a thing. There are some egregious enemies in this game, so <laughs> don't worry about that right now. I believe this one in the corner over here is a blood shard, so we'll get this. It's nice that we've got Molotovs dropping. <laughs> My initial playthrough I had like 8 arcane and it was just like nothing was dropping and now we're getting loads of stuff. I oh, don't worry, we will explain what Blood Echoes are for later on. I mean if you've played a Souls game you probably have a good idea as to exactly what they're for but we can't actually use them right now which is why we want to be uh, quite protective of them. We are going to be able to use them fairly soon though. Heal me! I don't know if this is going to work quite so well. The range just is not as big as the uh, other weapons that I like using. Right, let's go grab that look. Blood vial. Now, did I think it was a good idea to go down to the left here? I think I did. I should have pulled my nose up and I haven't. That's a bad thing. Bad Jody. Bad Jojo. So there's a shortcut here, technically, and yes, I do think this way is a good idea. It's correct. So we'll do with the big guy, um, just so you guys can see it getting dealt with. This guy in particular, um, you probably are going to want to try and use your parry mechanic on. Oh, he's going to actually come to around me uh, pretty early there. Usually you can sneak up on him a bit so you can get a, um, a rear charged attack, which will also allow us to get a visceral on him. But uh, it was not to be. Should have probably gone with shorthand there, but never mind. Altars, torch, wood file. I believe the torch is actually a pretty good idea for us. I don't know if we can not use the torch before. Does it take blood bullets? No. So we can actually hit people with the fire, and that's going to do some significant damage as well. But I haven't actually tested it because funny. Should be an item back here. So these, these are crows. Be careful of these. These also do like really bad chip damage. So the damage these do, you really are not just just are not going to be able to recover. You usually drop pebbles. It's nice actually getting loads of drops off of stuff. Wow, what's my happened to score? <laughs> 119. It's going to be higher soon as well. Uh, so I just wanted to talk about this way. Technically, I guess this would be your usual way forward. There's a group up there. You go up onto the bridge. Um, where there's some wolves. A bit of other stuff. But... I prefer this way. We're going to kill some dogs and we're going to grab a shortcut. Which will allow us to actually just get straight past them. So off this left side. I think that's everything around here. Ooh. Now, I don't know if it's related to the insight that you have. Ah, it's you that breaks out. I was going to say, usually they're all locked away first time we come in here and then one breaks out. Now once it's broken out, it's always going to be loose when you come back, even after you die or anything like that, so just be aware of that. You want to deal with the rest of these pretty quickly so that none, none of the others break out either. I'm deal with you. There's another one around the corner, but we're not going that way yet. We're going to go around here instead. So we want to go to the left first. Ordinarily, you'd actually drop down this bit. We're going to do that. And we're going to go around this way. Uh, these are very good for farming blood vials from, if you happen to be low on them. You'll also get a decent amount of souls from them at this stage of the game as well. So if you are feeling like you want more in that regard, be good for that. Let's get a torch out here, you can see. This guy's not your friend. He does always drop silver bullets though. Underblood cocktails. Keep hold of those. They're going to be useful for a boss. Two more up here. And we've got you. Got that. Not even, hit, not even hit 20 blood vials yet. We haven't really even used that many. I was to see how much damage that would actually do. I feel like the, uh, the attack animation on that is really slow. So we want to grab these. We don't want to fight these fair at all. Come on. I'm going to bring them down here. 
get our long mood on. Come on, come to the door. Here we are. Oop. So as you can see, the idea here is just to cheese them at the door. I don't feel like you guys need to see me do this all, so I'm going to skip to when these guys are dead. Okay, so let's get that last hit on there. So as you can see, it's just a matter of a couple of hits. Don't be too stupid. Heal yourself if you need to. Wolves are dealt with. They'll even drop you a few. I mean, usually they both drop me blood vials, but uh, apparently this time they decided not to. So this is where I said you'd ordinarily be dropping down for the uh, bloodstone child that we got last time. How many of those do we have? One. Once we get to three, we can actually upgrade the weapon. It's going to make everything way easier. So now that we're up on the bridge, we can head over this way. Um, technically, we could have gone a different way where the dogs are, but I prefer this way first because we should get ourselves some armor, which is just going to make everything way better. So most uh, gear in this game is for fashion. But the starting set that we're wearing right now has the worst, and when I say the worst, I mean like by far the worst um, stats of any um, any any kind of thing you could wear in the game. So we want to replace that as quickly as we can. Obviously, you could buy the stuff from from the uh, the Hunter's Dream, but we're going to get the free stuff because it just seems to make more sense. So you want to drop off down here, drop off onto this. Um, I suppose you kind of need to make a decision as to whether or not you want to try to run past these or whether or not you want to try to fight them. We're going to parry these guys. It's going to be very unforgiving for me because I've chosen the guy I've chosen. I mean, in terms of vitality, I think this starts with the least. So I'm probably going to die here. Hopefully not. <laughs> I feel like I've parried these enough now that I can... Uh, I should be okay. Come on, where are you? Come back to me. Come earth back to me. Come on. There we go. Uh, so these guys can actually drop um, additional bloodstone shards if you're lucky. So he's going to drop me a vial. Um, which obviously we use to upgrade our weapon. You can only upgrade to plus three from it. So, but they aren't enough to get to plus three before uh, we start facing a boss. So if you want to actually... Um, really have a solid advantage against a lot of this stuff at that point there's one there look then you can farm these guys um, wherever you find them in the level obviously it doesn't have to be these specific ones you can farm these guys to get the bloodstone shards this guy is the least forgiving because he hurts the most and has ridiculous range and now he's going to probably kill me ouch oh my god didn't actually oh my no I survived. I wasn't expecting to survive. I don't know why it's not letting me have the visceral attack. Come here. Another one. Getting lucky. This uh, extra arcane is already <laughs> is already enjoyable. Now, uh, in terms of this center part here, uh, up this back end is just rats. There was no loot up there uh, when I kind of did this on my stream, so I would. Just not bother with that. And instead, there's just one here that we need to deal with. But first, we're going to drop onto this beam. Onto the beam. Like this. Basically, more currency. I'm going to drop attack on you. So if you walk off, press R1. We'll do a drop attack. And now we're going to have this guy. This one is stronger than the others for whatever reason. Oh my god. Nope. Couldn't get through. Okay, let me get back there. Let's get this guy. He's carrying my souls. He's got to die now. Come here. What health he's got? We've got to do that again. There we go. We've got that revenge. Uh, I also need to make an apology. I didn't unlock a shortcut that we should have unlocked before coming down here. I'm going to show you guys where that is and why. Uh, we're going to actually be able to unlock it from here anyway, so if you've been lucky enough not to, to die, well done. Uh, to anybody that uh, has had to do the long way back here, I apologise too, that is my fault. I will fix that. Pretty much messed up. But before we move on, uh, this is where we now take a little bit less damage. It's not going to be mega, you're not, you're not going to be wandering around like an immortal knight or anything, but 
um, the difference is significant. Now, uh, we're heading down the next. Technically, you can just roll off right now if you want. You won't die. But there are a lot of enemies down there, and you will take a lot of damage. Uh, and for whatever reason, trying to roll onto this rafter is really janky. I think you hit this a little bit too much, and it kind of just knocks you out. So it's easier, in my opinion, to come over for this one. Um, and then we're just going to... Well, if you can actually walk straight, unlike me, you can uh, get yourself down here with taking less damage. It's fine, though. Crystal Bullet is in the middle there. These enemies are not worth your time at all. Uh, they don't get very much in the way of Blood Echoes. They do quite a lot of damage if they catch you wrong and are just generally not annoying to fight. So we're not going to bother with those. Instead, we're going to head down this way. Uh, we're going to miss this one. We want to go for the next right turn where we'll get another Blood Shard. There is one of these that we have to fight in here, though. Case in point. <laughs> They just take too much damage for what they are, really, to kill. Um, you spend your time attacking pretty much anything else for much better returns. Uh, and I think they just drop pebbles. So, really, like, kind of. Oh no, they actually drop Hunter's Marks. Interesting. Uh, pay attention to the pig. You could go and find that right now if you really wanted. But, uh, no, we're going to skip that. And. We've gone slightly the wrong way, but we're going to unlock a shortcut, which is what I promised, so we're going to do that. Don't worry. So, we're going to head up this way. Like this. And this will bring us out to where the uh, the brick trolls were that I said were good for farming blood vials earlier in the video. But now that we're going to skip straight past these, you can either go, you can either run past them straight across there, or you can come up to the left where they just kind of will pretty much leave you alone. So this is the building we were looking at before. Um, we did the drop off. So <laughs> when you first come through here, come through here, once you've killed these two guys, you should pass through here, kill this one guy, pick up the bloodstone shard on the left, and then open this gate, which takes you back to the lantern. Many apologies, that's my fault. Um. But there's the shortcut. It's fine. We're going to head back now. I'm going to... Yeah, so I'm going to skip forward. I will meet you guys back where we first fell off after getting the armor with all of the guys that were bottom of the sewer. See if you got some time. Okay, and so as I said, we're at the bottom where all these guys were. Uh, I shouldn't dally too much. We do need to get this ladder, and if they start attacking me, they might knock me off. So let's just make a way up here. Look at him trying to puke on me. Disgusting. Um, <clears throat> step clean. That way um, is a pain in the ass. You don't want to go that way from here because there's going to be gunners along the top, but it does lead back towards where all the dogs were um, and to where there's an NPC. We are going to clear all that probably in the next episode before we deal with the first boss, but uh, in this one we are going to deal with getting ourselves a few levels, unlocking the ability to power up basically because we're going to get some ins in insight. No, Madman's Knowledge. The item's called Madman's Knowledge. The thing it gives us is insight. So I'm going to kill all these. Try not to get caught by their attacks. They are annoying as hell. I hate the crows. Maybe not quite as much as dogs, but they're pretty bad. So that's going to allow us to now level up, which is good. I'll show you guys about that in a minute. Got a big guy here. Let's be careful of this. Uh, another parry test. Uh, if you're more patient than me, um, you can sneak up on him and get a charged R2 on him, and that'll give you also a visceral. Ah, get in. I did get in. Ha ha. Thank you very much. The cool thing is, um, visceral attack damage uh, scales with your level. So even if... Ah, that's just bad. If anybody wanted to know why that happens, basically, if you move your controller while pressing X, it'll do an emote. Uh, I think they'll have, like, different ones. It's a bit of a pain. <coughs> what was I saying? I don't remember. We're going to open this gate. Oh, yeah, so now we have insight. We can level up. Um... Show you guys that when we get there. Make sure you talk to this NPC. We want to say, find girl's mother. Sad little girl, she never survives. Um, but basically, if we send her somewhere in a bit, she will give us a decoration for our messenger. So basically, if you use the notebook, um, she can give you decorations for it. So from here... 
from here. We could go back down. I don't think the best way best way to go is. So from here, it's gonna make the video a little long, but it's fine. So we're gonna head over this way. Uh so obviously I, I, don't, I did like kind of pause it a little bit, but I think we we're in the same place. We're gonna go past this big guy. We're gonna get the item on the back end of this uh, set of bars just here. We're gonna go past the guys on that foyer. You don't really need to face them. We're gonna head back to the lantern so that we can level up a little bit and improve our situation a little. Probably gonna have a big boost to health basically because that's the main thing that I'm missing. It feels like. So as you can see, lots of dogs. Just be careful of them. Um, if you want to use some, like, items here, feel free. I don't blame you, but I always try to save them because I'm like that. Can I get you through this? No. Uh, one of the cool things about this game is uh, clipping. You can go through barriers a lot of the time. Can I reach through with this? No. I, mean, I didn't really need to because it's a ranged, ranged enemy, but uh, it's just worth knowing. I just wanted to clear this area so that we've got it done. Ouch, do you mind? Other enemy guilty of stupid ship damage. It's fine though, got lots of blood vials now. Oh, you followed me? What? That's never happened before. Well, at least not to me. Well, that's unusual. Um, so yeah, with this a little bit cleared, you guys can kind of just put piece together the rest of the fact that this is where we passed the first kind of crowd of enemies. Brick troll was in there. We came up with the steps. That's where we uh, just set the girl, little girl free. Came up this way. This is the bridge where the two walls were. Beyond there is the shortcut through the building. That's where we took the drop down to get the armor and Madden Man's knowledge. And we're going to drop off here so we can head back towards the lantern. I didn't kill all this because I had to run past it all. When I uh, died again. So we're going to skip back to the lantern. I'm not going to skip. I'm going to run, probably. I don't know if you guys want to see me go all the way back or not. We are kind of difficult to gauge. I'm going to run past all this. See in a bit. Well, that kind of demonstrates just how much you actually have to fight in this game. So at this point then, uh, I feel like I might as well skip back to the Hunter's Dream so you guys can see us levelling up. Well, I was half right. So if we're going to go from the top area. That's because before you go into the Hunter's Dream, you're going to want to use your Madman's Knowledge. This is going to wake up the doll. You guys will see once we get in there. Uh, so let's go back to the Hunter's Dream now. Okay, so now that we're here, we've got one insight. This means... Uh, well, it'll give you this so you can actually summon help from other players. Um, and NPCs, interestingly enough. We're going to use that to our advantage in a bit. Old Hunter Bell. It's all good. And then we are gonna talk to the doll. Who is now a girl. And we can get ourselves a few levels. Um It's up to you really. I'm probably gonna put like when when I've got a bunch of levels, I'm gonna put one in Arcane, and then I'm gonna spread the rest into survival stats. Now technically I do want my strength and skill to hit sixteen and twelve. Because of the weapons that I wanna use. Endurance is pretty much fine right now. Once that hits 20, you're probably in a comfortable position. You can go above that if you wish to. All levels will increase your physical defense. So as you level up, you will take less damage, which is also kind of handy. So it's just worth knowing. I've got four levels left, right? So I'm going to have two in health. And I'm going to have one in skill and one in strength. <clears throat> now, because I'm doing arcane, technically, uh, any points that I put into these will be wasted. Um, in terms of, like, damage scaling and stuff. But... Uh, for now, they are going to be useful, and I am going to need to fulfill minimum requirements for weapons. So, uh, I do really like Ludwig's Holy Blade. Uh, I just really like the moveset on it because it reminds me of the longsword. So, uh, yeah, that's how I'm going to how I'm going to go for now. Should have some leftovers, leftover echoes. So we're going to use that to upgrade our weapon, means we have the blood shards. There we go. Need two more to get to plus two, which would be nice. But um, we'll be doing that in the next episode. So things will be significantly easier for you at this point. 
Uh, but before we face any of the bosses, we are going to be doing a little bit more. So I'll meet you guys in the next episode back at Centurion. See you all then.